Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss trinomials. But before we go on with this video, please look at our previous video on trinomials. In our previous video, we had discussed trinomials where the number in front of x squared is 1. Today we're going to take it to a higher level where the number in front of the x squared is going to change. In order to do these levels, you have to be comfortable with doing trinomials on a level 1 scale. Trinomials is an important section throughout the math syllabus. If you have a problem with trinomials, you're going to have a problem with many sections in matric. So please make sure that this section is thorough and well revised. When we start, the first few rules are exactly the same as in our first video. We start always by looking at the sign of the last term. Being a plus, we know that the signs are either going to be plus and plus or minus and minus. Then we look at the second term, which is a negative. Using addition and subtraction, we know that this plus and plus will give us a positive, but this negative and negative will give us a negative meaning that both our brackets are going to be negative. Please note that when you are using these methods, we are always using examples where the number in the first trinomial is a positive. Okay, continuing with that, now we look at the factors of 9. The factors of 9 1 and 9, 1 times 9 is equal to 9, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Also, 9 times 1 is equal to 9. In our previous video, if numbers were repeated, in other words, 1 times 9, we never had to rewrite 9 times 1. Reason being was we always worked with 1. Now, because we are working with a different number, we are now working with 12. The factors of 12 will affect the answer and in the direction they used also affects your answer. Now, let's take the factors of 12. If we say 12 times 1, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, those are the three that you can use. There's no need to change or swap the 12. As long as you are working with one side, when you are swapping, you only swap one side. You don't need to redo the second side. What we're trying to get now is the value of 56. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first line with the second line. Now, why are we cross multiplying? You see, the first line will create our first bracket and the second line creates our second bracket. If you look at the following, if the first line creates our first bracket, let's say it was x minus 2, when you're doing the kitty cat or the foil, x times x gives us x squared. First line times second line. Let us write it in this form so you can see what do I mean. When we times x times x, it was first line times second line. When we times, when we multiply minus 2 times positive 3, we multiply it again, the first line with the second line. Now look at when we are doing the smiles. The minus 2 from the first line is multiplying with the x from the second line. The minus 2 from the first bracket is multiplying with the x from the second bracket, making it a cross. If you take the big smile, the x from the first line is multiplying with the 3 from the other bracket, from the second bracket. Again, it's a cross. Therefore, when we are trying to get 56, we are going to use 
a cross multiplication effect. Now let us try which numbers are going to give us 56. At this level when you start in grade 10 it's much to do with trial and error but as you get used to it you will realize that it gets easier and easier but it's practice that makes perfect and you have to master this concept. Now if we were going to say 12 times 9 if we're going to say 12 times 9, we already know we are 90 something. We, we've exceeded 90 because 9 times 10 is going to give us 90. And then we've got a 1 and a 1. So we know that's not going to give us 56. Now let's try 12 and 1 with the 3 and the 3. 12 times 3 is 36. 1 times 3 is another 3 that's giving us about 37. We know that is now too low. Then we're going to try 12 and 1, which is 12 and 9. 12 and 9 is not near 56. Once we've tried all of them, we know that 12 and 1 is not going to work. We go to 2 and 6. 9 times 2 is 18. 6 times 1 is 6. We know that's not going to work because 18 and 6 is not going to give us 56. Then we try 2 and 3 gives us 6. 6 and 3 is 18. Again, we are on two low numbers. Then we try. 2 times 1 is 2. 9 times 6 is 54. That one would work. So let's do that again. 2 times 1 is 2. 9 times 6 is 54. Giving us 56. How do we write our answer down? Now the numbers that we got are 2 and 6 and 9 and 1. The 2 and 6 is created from the 12x squared. So we know that these have x's because x times x must equal to x squared. We put our brackets around and we know our signs are going to be minus minus. So our final answer is 2x minus 9, 6x minus 1. Now, you need to make sure that this table, when you are starting and mastering the section, you continuously do it until you come to the correct answer. Notice that when we wrote the one line creates the one bracket, 2 and the 9, and the second line creates a second bracket, 6 and 1. Let's do the following example. 5x squared minus 13x minus 28. Now we know that our brackets are going to have a plus and a minus. But you cannot now, in this level, you cannot state which one's going to be big and small because the plus and minus is created by the smiles. Let us now write the factors of 5. We've got 5 and 1. We don't need to write 1 and 5 because we are always going to swap the factors of the last term. Now the factors of the last term, we have 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 7 and 4. Then we have 28 and 1. Notice I am swapping them. 14 and 2. 4 and 7. So, number 1, we got the signs, which is from our previous video. Number 2, we got our multiples. Right, number three, we're going to cross multiply. When you're doing a sum and you can see it's already too high, you can immediately stop. Like if I say 5 times 28, I know I'm already exceeding 100. That's not going to give me 13. So immediately, I'm going to stop with that one. Then I'm going to say 5 times 14. That will give me 50, 60, 70. 70 is already going to be too high because even if I take the 2, I'm not going to get 13. Then we take the next one. 5 times 4 is 20. 
7 times 1 is 7. 20 and 7 can give me 13. So I know those are the numbers I'm looking at. 5 and 1, 7 and 4. Now 5 times 4 equals 20 and 7 times 1 equals 7. Now in our previous video we told you that the minus or the plus will be based on which is the bigger one. In this case they are specifically talking of the smiles. We need a negative 20. Why? Because the question says negative 13. So we know we want a negative 20 but we want a positive 7. That would equal to negative 13. Now what created the 20? The two numbers that created the 20 was 5 and 4. The signs are going to be placed on the constants on the right hand side. So we know that the 7 is going to be a positive and the 4 is going to be a negative. How do we write it? This is your first line. So we've got 5x plus 7 creating your first bracket and your second line is going to create your second bracket. So we've got 1x minus 4 giving you your answer. It, if you are unsure about it, it is nice to check by just doing the smiles. 7 times 1 is 7x minus 4 plus 5 is minus 20x which equals to minus 13x giving us the middle number. Thank you for watching this video.